come to give God the highest praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just make a declaration that you're going to give him your best this morning. You're going to give him your best. Not a half praise, but a whole fully engaged praise. Come on, begin to clap. Above the nation, and the glory above the nation. 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 And the glory
He's been too good for us not to praise Him. If you love to praise the Lord, anybody love to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. And if He's been good to you, say it. Yeah. Hallelujah. We serve a holy God. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you the highest praise. Come on, this is another oldie. But the Lord. It says, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. You're holy and you're worthy to receive glory. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know it, sing it with us. Say holy, 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 holy. Say holy, 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 holy.
praise what you came for. Come on, say it. I come to give him praise. a bitter, right, or could have been a sad, bitter with things that we've gone through, but because of his presence, because of God, he adds that sweetness. He's with us in the storm. He's with us through the storm. So, God, we thank you that you're the Lord of glory and you're filled with spirit.
it again. It's you, Lord. Just another moment or two. Oh, hallelujah. It's you, Lord. We worship you because you're our daddy. You're Papa God, your daddy God. Hallelujah. You told us. When we pray, say our Father. So we acknowledge you today. You're our Father. Whether we've been good or bad, you're our Father. Whether we got it all right or whether we got none of it right, you're our Father. And you've loved us with an everlasting love. And you have invited us to come into your presence. In fact, your word says that Greater is he, and that is within you, than he that is in the world. So there's nothing in the world that's greater than God. Nothing, nobody in the world is greater than God. When we get that straight, it will help us with our priority. Yeah. Because sometimes we give more attention to the things of the world than we do to the things of the spirit. The greater one is in living inside of you now. And he loves you. And he wants you to love him back. He wants you to worship him. Hallelujah. And give him glory. Hallelujah. Listen to this, Jonathan. I will bless the Lord and give him glory. Oh, I will bless the Lord and give him glory. And give him glory. Come on, singers, I know you know that. I will bless the Lord and give him glory. Oh, I will bless his name. And give him glory and give him glory. 
Sing it one more time. I will, I will bless the Lord and give him glory. And give you glory and give him glory. Sing it one more time. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord and give him glory. Hallelujah. I will bless him. Will you? Hallelujah. Well, when you bless somebody, something comes out of your mouth. That's how you bless somebody. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're a good God. That's how you bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord continuously and his praise shall be in my mouth and give him glory and give him glory and give him at home come on I'm going to give you one last chance and Now bless him. Now bless him with your own words that comes out of your heart. With thanksgiving, bless him. He's worthy to receive all glory and honor, majesty and dominion. We love you, Lord. We love you. 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 We love. You. See, this is praise and worship. This is not just about singing song. This is about intimacy with God. And when you get intimate with somebody you love, there are certain expressions that are acceptable. That right? I love my wife, so it's acceptable for me to kiss her. I love the Lord, so it's acceptable for me to kiss him and worship kisses God. I'll have you kiss God this morning. Did anything come out of your mouth that would bless the Lord and kiss him? Oh, hallelujah. See, we, have, we associate all of these earthly things in a wrong way sometimes. And say, I ain't never heard nobody talking about kissing God. But when you mess around and start studying the word, you'll understand some of the stuff, what some of the stuff means. Because God wants us to be intimate with us. And some of us think intimacy only has to do with sexual things, but intimacy is far beyond and above just sexual things. Hallelujah. God doesn't, God don't want to have no sex with us, but he does want to be personal with you. He wants you to know without a doubt. He loves you. Even if you don't feel like you're worthy, he wants you to know you're my child. Oh, yeah. I died for you. I'm not letting you get away. The only way you get away, you choose not to come to me. You can be down in the pig pen and get up 
and run into the arms of the Lord and he will receive you just as you are. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Help somebody today, Lord. Somebody, somebody don't think they were that they don't think you want to have nothing to do with them. But I want help them to understand you are God. And you came to rescue us. You came to save us. Not push us away. Not reject us. But to say, come on, honey. Come on. Come on. Daddy's here. Come. Come. Come to me. Don't run away from me. Come to me. Run to me. Don't run away from me. Run to me. Into my open arms. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless his name today. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, all of the, you that are worshiping, that have joined us today. And I pray that you're worshiping with us. Don't ever let praise and worship just become a a, 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 a song fest where there's no that you're, you're not expressing anything that comes out of your heart toward God. God's been too good for us to do that, to treat him like that. Isn't that right? You ought to at least say thank you. You ought to say thank you. Everybody in here, I need to hear some noise. Something, some will. You can say thank you, Lord. In fact, the Bible gives us instructions, Psalm 100. Enter into its courts with what? Thanksgiving. Come on in with praise. Hallelujah. If we'll, if we'll follow the scripture, you will end up in the presence of God. If you do what the word says, the word says come with thanksgiving. Enter with thanksgiving. Oh. Gratitude will get you a long way. When you know how to be thankful. When you know how to be grateful. For stuff that you don't deserve. And ain't much that most of us deserve. Ain't that right? <laughs> Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, <coughs> we're continuing our worship. And um, as we have offered ourselves to him, now we can offer our substance to him. See, because when you worship, it prepares your heart to be able to give and open yourself to the Lord. It, it helps you to be able to trust God. See, there's no intimacy without trust. Isn't that right? Oh, I know that's right. And so when God knows that you love him and you trust him, then that means it'll be easy for us to do what he asks. Bring the tithe and the offering. Amen. God instituted that. Man didn't institute that. God gave the instruction of what was to happen. And then he gave promises that would happen as a result of that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So now there are five ways that you can, that you can give. You see that on the screen. And whichever way you feel comfortable to do that, um, uh, most folk nowadays are using electronic giving. It's safe, and it gets right where it's going. It comes where you send it, and uh, we have a record of that. And uh, we thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity toward the work of the Lord. Now, what we're going to do now is there's a profession that we add to our giving words we 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 water our seed with the word of god the water of the word say the water of the word the water of the word you know seed has to be watered and so we water our seed with the word of god is that good all right would you join in with us if you would stand on your feet and let's make this profession before the lord I want you to do it boldly. Think about what you what you're fixing to say. 
This is bold. Oh, God, hallelujah. From 2 Corinthians 9, 10, it reads, I will never be without seed. Think about that just a moment. I'm telling you that's true. I've never been without seed to give when it was time to get. I don't care where I was, what's going on. I've never been without seed to give. I will never be without seed according to 2 Corinthians 9, 10. Come on, join in with me. And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruit of your righteousness, which manifests itself also in act of goodness, kindness, and charity. Therefore, according to 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, I will not so sparingly or grudgingly, reluctantly or sorrowful or under compulsion, for God loves and takes pleasure in prized it above other things and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. That's me, Lord. If that's you, I want you to shout. That's me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of sowing. God is an awesome God. Uh, we're ready to go to the word, and I'm going to, I want to pray before I bring this word. Father, I thank you today for who you are to us. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given us your spirit who illuminates and makes alive your word in our hearts. Not by power, not by might, but by your spirit. So Lord, we ask you now that you would grant to us, as Paul prayed many times, grant to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Open the eye of our understanding so that we understand more clearly and accurately what your word is speaking to us and revealing to us. And then give us hearts and minds to obey and make application of what your word is instructing us to do in that matchless name that is above every other other name and the people of God shouted amen and amen well today I'm going to return to a uh, a topic that I started a few weeks ago and did one part of it and uh, this is something the Lord placed in my heart while while I was on a uh, honeymoon I was laying there reading I spent a lot of time just resting that was a part of the instruction uh, to me that I needed to take some time away and I needed to just rest because God is preparing us to take us into another dimension. And so that's what I tried to do. And I just lay in the bed and I said, I don't know about you all sometimes. When, when, I'm, when, when it's time to pray, I sometimes I just say, Lord, I don't have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. So you know what I do? I just lay I just lay there in the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, speak to your servant. Open my ears that I can hear what the Spirit is saying to me and to, for your church. And that's what I would do. I spent lots of time just resting and hearing. You know, it's hard to hear God when you when you when you uptight and tense and wonder if God even cares about you or, or heard you. But the scripture says his ears are open to the cry of his people. And I've got to come back and do a series that the Lord gave me on what it really means to cry out to God. 
to cry out to God. Sometimes you're in a tight. You ain't got time to be all sophisticated. Hey, Jesus, help! See, if, 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 if a car is coming toward you, you ain't got time. I'm a father. No, you ain't got time for that. Help! God hears the cry of his people. Amen. But if you don't have a personal relationship with him, you think you got to be all formal. Amen. Glory to God. We're continuing the series, a command to be strong and of a good courage. Those are the words that the Holy Spirit spoke to Joshua, the minister of Moses. While everybody else was cutting the food down in the camp, Joshua was, was right, he stayed close to Moses. Uh, he wasn't supposed to go up on the hill, but he was close to the hill. You understand me what I'm saying? He was close as he could be without dying. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to learn how close. I need to be close. I need to be near to her. I want to be close to you. Lord, I want to be close to you. Amen. We need to be close. Sometimes we're going to be close to everybody that can't do, a, can't do nothing for us. But I want to be close to the one that hears my cry. Amen. Let's go to Joshua, if you would. Joshua 1. Where I want to go. I gave you that. Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. Let's go there. Let me read that part and give you a little foundation from which we're going to speak. And then we'll go on. We'll move forward. Uh, Joshua 1, 1 th through uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses... The servant of the Lord. See, some things happen after something has happened. The Lord said to Joshua, uh -huh, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. Go on, please. Moses, my servant, is dead. So now arise, take his place. Go over the Jordan. You and all this people that You and all this people into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. God is clear. Ain't no doubt about it. God made a promise to Moses that he was going to give them the promised land, Canaan land. And it's been 400 years now. Because they, in, they went into Egyptian bondage for 400 years. So now he's just reminding Joshua what he told Moses. I promise, I made a promise over 400 years ago and I am going to, I am going to fulfill the promise. See, God never breaks a promise. God is a covenant-keeping God. God never breaks covenant. You might want to write that down. God never breaks covenant. Men often break covenant. How many times have we broken covenant with God? God never breaks, say it. God never breaks covenant with me. If the covenant is broken, it's because I did it. Put your hand on yourself. It's me. I did it. I made the choice to break the covenant. But thank God, God is the God that is ready to renew the covenant. If we'll repent and turn and do what he's instructing us to do. Isn't that good news? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Go on to verse for one. Every place upon which your sole of your foot shall tread. You got to walk this out. That 
I have given, that I have given to you. Amen. As I promised Moses, verse 4. <laughs> From the wilderness of this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, Euphrates, Euphrates. Where is Euphrates River? Where is the Euphrates River? Huh? Where is it? It was found in the Garden of Eden. That's one of the rivers that was found. Euphrates River was found in Africa. Mm -hmm. All right. All the land of the Hittites, Canaan, and to the great Mediterranean Sea on the west shall be your territory. Wow, that's a big territory he's giving them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, verse 5. No man, here's another promise. He's reminding Joshua, no man. God is speaking to Joshua. He's giving him instruction. He's preparing him to lead the people because God knows what is, he is ahead. Joshua does not. But God knows what is ahead, and so he's preparing Joshua. I'll, I'll get into something in just a few minutes. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. You watch me how I was with Moses, how I led the people by, through Moses. So I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Oh, that's a, hey, that's a promise right there. I take that personally. See, we're reading about what God said to Joshua, but God is saying the same thing to us. I will not fail you or, not, or forsake you. Yeah, because see, I, I'm standing in this pulpit and I've got the responsibility to lead God's people. God, I need to know God. He says, I'm not going to fail you or forsake you. But you got to do what I said do. You got to follow. The people have got to be willing to follow what I'm saying to do. And that's the only thing that held them up. You know, their unwillingness to obey what God was saying kept them going in a circle for 40 years. Think about that. How long have we been going in circles because we weren't willing to follow what God is saying? We don't make, that don't make no sense. We don't really want to do that. Oh, really? Well, you can't, we can't get the promise if we're not willing to do what God said. Does that make sense? And then we want to know where is God and why, why this ain't happen. God said, because I told you what to do and you didn't do it. So I'm not going to reward your disobedience. Wow. Some of us are really think God wants to reward our disobedience. If he teaches us that we, that we get rewards for disobedience, do you reward your children for their disobedience? You just love them so much you just can't hardly stand it. You, you just have to, okay. That's why we got what we got today because some folk don't understand that. They say, well, my parents were, were tough on me. So I'm not going to be tough on my children. So they relegated being parents to being friends with their children. And you see some of the results of what we see today because they have changed the role of parenthood to friendship. It's one thing to be friendly with your child and loving with your child, but it's another thing your child need to understand. You the parent. You the, you, you the parent. You're the one that God gave responsibility f for them. Amen. And there's a reward. Honor your mother and your father that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God. How many people, how many young folk are gone because they dishonored their parents? They're in the grave and we say dumb stuff like well, it was just their time. No, it wasn't there. Sometimes it wasn't their time. The enemy saw our door open and killed them in their rebellion. Folk don't like for you to say stuff like that, but it's truth anyhow. 
How many of y'all know that's true? Can you holler amen, that's true? Okay. Not everybody, but there are many that should not have been, should not have died, but because of their disobedience, they are gone, gone too soon. Oh, no man shall be, be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not, I will not fail you or forsake you. Go on to the next verses. We're going to speed up. Be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong. Say be strong, be strong. See, when God, God is not just saying something to fill, to, to fill a space with words, be strong, be confident. In other words, when God says be strong, see, we're going we to need to be strong to be able to do what God said. Do y'all know that's right? It's going to take courage to do what God said. Amen. Do you know that's true? Huh? Do you re really believe that? It's going to take some courage to do what it, it's going to take some mental toughness to do what God said. Yes, it is. Yes, it will. Be strong confident and of good courage for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give. God said I swore. Remember God made covenant with Abraham over this promise. Remember the animals that he had him cut? Cut. Blood. Blood was shed. God is a covenant keeping God and covenant always involved blood blood amen God said I swore with Abraham said I swore by myself and that means if I don't fulfill this I will cease to exist and God ain't about to go nowhere hallelujah verse 7 only you be strong I got my part of it only you be very uh, uh, be very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded, commanded, didn't suggest he commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or the left that you may prosper wherever you go. That's God's instruction to us. The word of God is our instruction. It's the book of life. If we'll follow the book of life, there's some things in there that, that uh, see, wh the problem is that many folk read the Bible and say, this is the Old Testament, so this don't have nothing to do with me. Say wrong. That's so wrong. That's wrong. I know we are new, I know that we are New Testament believers, but there are some things in the Old Testament, some instructions there, and the, they are still true today. Amen. Glory to God. Wherever you go, listen. Because God is little by little instructing and showing us how to walk this thing out. Okay, let's go on to the next verse if you would. This book of the law shall not depart out of where? Say it. Where? What are you saying? What's coming out of your mouth over your life? What are you speaking over your life? What's coming out of your mouth? What do you let coming out of your mouth? What are you saying to yourself? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Are you speaking what God said? Or are you speaking what you think? Or what you feel? Which one is it? I'm trying to tell you how to be successful today. What the word says still is true and God gave us an example of how he works with a nation of people through leaders God is trying to show us how he accomplishes his will through a congregation of people by speaking through the leader from his word to them and when you read the word you would find the same thing that I'm saying to you is true in the book. I'm not making up stuff. Glory to God. 
This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. What? Day and night. What are you meditating on? What are you meditating on day and night? Are you laying in bed worrying and fretting about, am I going to make it tomorrow? Oh, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it next week. I don't have, I don't have enough resources. See, you, you got your mind on your self-sufficiency and not on your, on God's sufficiency. Because God is the one that owns everything. And when we obey God according to the word, he can make all grace to abound toward you. Things that seem to be blocking you, God can cause his grace to come toward you. And like a person running down the track, stepping over hurdles, the hurdle that's in front of you can step right over that hurdle. Because God's grace gives you the ability to step over the obstacle. Oh, praise God. That's good preaching right there. So some of us are so, we are so focused on the obstacle. Oh, that's too much. That's too big. That, I, I can't do that. Who, who told you you couldn't do it? I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in the word, that is in, the, in, in, in me than he that is in the world. Now, what do you believe? Do you believe the greater one lived in you? Or you think the devil's so bad, Jesus is going to have a hard time uh, winning that fight. What do you think? See, a lot of times we don't go forward because our thinking is messed up. And I'm, 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 I'm going to come back and continue this. I'm going to do a series called uh, Mental Health Moments from the Word of God. What God did to Joshua was, was to prepare him for the journey because he knew what Joshua was going to be facing. He knew all the obstacles. He knew all the crazy folk he was going to have to deal with. He knew all the enemies that were going to come against Israel. Amen. See, he knew Achan was going to act the fool and steal, steal uh, that, that, that Babylonian garment and hide it in his tent. And that was going to hinder God's blessing on the, on, on, on the nation. So God, God had Joshua go through the, the camp and the Holy Spirit identified that, what, what's his name? Um, Achan. Achan was the one that stole it. And because he comes to him, he said, give God, give God glory and, and, and tell us what you did. And so Achan fessed up and said what he did. And he said, go get the garment. Now, it caused Achan and it caused Achan family because they ended up stoning uh, Achan and his family Everything they had, his children, his cattle, everything. That you say, God, that ain't fair. But you got to understand how God is holy and he means what he said. Amen. So it cost Achan his life and his family's life were wiped out because of their disobedience. Because God had instructed Joshua to tell the folk, when you go into Ai, the Ai is the first city that you're going to take in Canaan. And everything, say everything, everything belongs to me, God. God, what you going to do with it? We're going to burn up everything. What? You're going you're gonna to burn up all the gold. You're going to burn up all that stuff. You're going to kill all the animals. Everything, he says, is mine. See, something God reserved for himself. See, you, that's why you need to understand the tithe. The tithe belongs to God. Now, you can take it and use it for your own, what you think is your own advancement. But you're going to find out you're not going to be any better off by doing that. Because you missed the opportunity to see God's faithfulness to be manifested in your life when you 
we obey what he says. Bring me the tithe. It belongs to me. I'm not going to do you like the government. I'm not going to take it from you. You know, government don't, don't wait, for you, wait for you to bring them tithe. They take it when you get your check. It's already out. Is that right? Is that right? Because they, they know how folk can be once they get it home. This is mine, son. No. We're going to take what we want. Yeah. Glory to God. Okay. And so, okay. <clears throat> Where are we? But you shall meditate day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. What are you thinking about? God is so good. Lord, I thank you that you are faithful. When I read your word, I see how you were faithful to the men and women that you appointed to do certain things. You did what you said to them. In certain instances, you did a supernatural thing. Amen. Glory to God. Moses, you in front of the Red Sea, what's that you got in your hand? See, Moses, sometimes we don't realize what God put in our hand. He said, what I want you to do is stretch out over the water what, I, what you got in your hand. What well, number but a rod. It looked like a rod. It's just a stick. Stretch it out. He stretched it out, and the sea bust wide open. Supernatural. Some things we're not going to get done without the supernatural intervention of God. Do y'all understand that some things ain't going to happen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take God super on top of the natural because God going to prove to you it's not your, it's not your power, it's not your might, it's his might. It is his strength. It's his ability above your ability. I'm talking to somebody today. It's God's ability. See, you've been trying to get things straight. Uh-huh. You, you, uh, some of us, some of us do all kind of things. We want to get a house, so we're going to take and do stuff that God didn't tell us to do, and you're going to try and get yourself in trouble. And if you just trust God and follow God and obey God, God can bless you. He can bless you. He can bless you so good you won't have room to receive it. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. I know that's right. Has anybody ever received anything from God? You don't know. You, the only thing I can say, God did it. God did it. When we got that home out there where we live now, we walked through there and say, do we really live here? <laughs> Have mercy. <coughs> Have mercy. Because we know we didn't have the ability. But God, but God, say but God, but God, but God. See, we had all kind of medical bills and that kind of thing. And we thought, we thought sure that was going to block what we were trying to do. And we found out that most of the time these folk don't even count medical debt. And I had somebody that's a nurse. She said, baby, don't worry about it because the hospital is insured for folk that cannot pay. Amen. So they're going to get paid. Amen. And I set up a plan with them where I was paying them on a monthly basis. And I went one day to make the, the monthly payment. And they couldn't find my record. They said, Mr. Brown, we can't find your record. I said, so I said, I tell you what, I ain't giving y'all no money. I ain't giving y'all no more money because if y'all ain't got no record, I won't know when I'm through paying y'all. So I ain't giving y'all nothing else. So I left it alone. I didn't do it. I didn't give them any more money. I'm serious. No. It's your responsibility to keep the record and be able to tell me what my balance is. Ain't that right? Throw your hand in the air. I ain't going to keep giving you money and I don't have no balance. I don't have no record of what I owe. Huh? And God blessed us. I'm just, I'm just showing you how God divinely intervened. For then you shall make your way. He said, meditate day and night, day and night. See, we, we meditate on the trouble more than we meditate on what God said. Why are you meditating on the obstacle? Why are you meditating on that mean person on your job that's been trying to block you from getting the point? Why are you meditating on them? and plotting uh, murder. 
Because when you plot, when you meditate on the wrong thing, it'll make you do some crazy stuff. See, you don't need to go to jail trying to get no promotion. Because it ain't going to do you no good in jail. And everybody know I'm telling you to just holler, amen. I know that right. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. So stop plotting. Because if you do what you're thinking about doing, you're going to be in jail. You're going to be sleeping on a metal bed with about a two-inch uh, mattress. <laughs> For then you shall make your way. What? You're going to make your way proper when you, when you spend your time doing what? Meditating on this word. And don't let it come out, get out, leave your mouth. Keep speaking it over and over. Keep meditating. Mur murmur to murmur to rehearse over and over. Lord, I thank you that you see it. I thank you, Lord, your, that your word promised. Uh, somebody, when we was in, when, when I was growing up in the Baptist church, uh, they used to sing, I, I, I promised the Lord that I would hold on, hold on, hold on. I promised the Lord I would hold on. I meet him in Galilee. I don't know what, you got to be careful about meeting him in Galilee because somebody got their head cut off. Uh, Okay, so see, I mean, okay, you better be careful what you, what you talk about. Know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> oh, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely. Deal wisely. Say, deal wisely. God gonna teach me how to deal wisely. Derek, God gonna teach us how to deal wisely. It's some crazy people in the world. And God got some crazy children. But he's going to teach us how to deal wisely with crazy people. I'm talking to somebody at home. Hey, don't you, don't, hey, don't waste your time meditating on how you're going to get back at that person. Don't waste your time. Open the book and see what God promised. Oh, read Joshua. See what God said to Joshua. And be encouraged by the words that God spoke to Joshua, if you would. It is important to remember that Joshua inherited the responsibility for leading a nation of people who had been enslaved. Listen, who had been enslaved for 400 years. Can you imagine the mindsets he had to deal with? from millions of people or from leading millions of people into what God promised Moses for them. And this was a God ordered deliverance. It was a God ordered deliverance, but they still had to deal with issues. Isn't that right? An 11 day journey that turned into 40 years of going in circle because the people wouldn't obey what God. They started murmuring and complaining. See, now, but I need you to understand. I need you to understand. See, mental moments, a lot of stuff in this shows you mental stuff, the mindsets of people. Because you got folk that's been enslaved for 400 years. Can you imagine the messed up mindsets they got? Can you imagine? Them. See, some of our folk, because of the hard times they had, their minds are messed up. They don't think right. But the word has many mental health moments that will help us and teach us how to think the way God wants us to think. That's the point I'm making. And so God had to spend time and talk to Joshua in this way to prepare him. Because like I said, God knew what, my, what Joshua was going to be facing. And so this, 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 I see it this way. I felt like this is what the Lord showed me. This was a mental health moment. I'm, try, I'm preparing the leader because he's got the responsibility to lead the people. And if he got the wrong mindset, they're not going to make it. If he don't believe he going to make it, if he don't think he can lead them in, guess what? Most likely, they're not going to get in. 
me. That's the thing I have to deal with sometimes. I say, Lord, dear God. Because leading people is not an easy job. If you've never been a preacher, you ain't got a clue. It's one thing. How many of y'all know uh, riding in the car is one thing when you're in, under the steering wheel and another when you're sitting over there on the passenger side? How many of y'all know it's a whole, it's a whole nother thing? How many, ain't, ain't it? Because cause our life is in the hand of the one that's under the wheel. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And one, one, one bad decision can get us hurt real bad or dead. Is that right? So you see, the leadership, the leadership responsibility is a heavy thing. So you might want to rethink what you're thinking about the leader. I want to, I want to share this with you because my time is about gone. Mental health encompasses emotional, psychological, uh, me mental, psychological uh, that relates to or occurs in the mind and social well-being, influencing cogn cognition and disability affecting judgment. Mental health affects the way we process things and the way we respond to those things, mental health. See, we hearing so, we got to talk about this in the church because we're hearing so much about mental health. How many of y'all know that's right? And everything now, somebody shoots somebody, um, uh, it's a mental health issue. Some of that stuff ain't a mental health issue. Some of that stuff is demonic activity. And you cannot, you cannot medicate a demon. You have to cast that demon out. That's not insensitive. I'm just telling you, some of this stuff is demonic control people that have opened themselves to demonic spirits. Because the cause folk that saying the Lord told me to kill somebody, that is not God telling you that. That is a devil. How do you know that? Because the Bible says, uh, John 10.10, 10, that the devil comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus came that we might be saved. He came to give us life. He didn't come to steal our life and blot out our life. He came to restore. Thank you very much. I see it. I want you to think about that. See, and it comes from anger. So many, so many folks are angry. They upset with everybody. They want to hurt everybody. They want to kill everybody. Mental health. We got to talk about this, okay? Because it, it affects uh, our judgment, perception, and behavior. According to the World Health Organization, it is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her ability to cope with normal stress of life, there's a normal stress of life, because living life it can be stressful, normal, can work and can work productively and fruitfully and can contribute to his or her community. Your mental health state, the state of your mind, what is going through your mind. What are you meditating? See, we sit in front of the television and watch all of this, all this killing, all these, all these killing movies, all of these monster movies, and 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 all this kind of stuff. And folk don't realize the effect that this stuff has on your mental health. Folk watch that stuff and then they frighten to death. They can't sleep because they scared that a monster or a devil going to grab them while they sleeping and all that kind of stuff. And people do it all. They love monster movies. Hmm. That's why some movies I don't watch. I don't watch a lot of movies with a lot of ugly people in there. I don't like, I, I can't deal with all these ugly people. 
uh, <laughs> trying to tell me a story. No, I don't think so. Now, y'all go ahead and knock yourself out, but not me. Amen. I don't, I don't live in, in make-believe land. I like to live in reality. Amen. It likewise determines how an individual handles stress, interpersonal relationships, decision making. Mental health includes subjective well being, perceived well uh, uh, efficacy, uh, autonomy, competence, intergenerational dependence, and self actualization of one intellectual and emotional potential among others. Hmm. God was preparing, I'm closing with this, God was preparing Joshua for the stuff, the enemies that he's going to have to face. So, and he said, don't be afraid. Be strong. Be of a good courage. Because you're going to see some stuff that will scare the pants off if you ain't. Scare the pants off if you if not, you're not sure. How many of y'all seen some stuff scare the pants off of you? But you got to be mentally prepared. And you got to know who you are in Christ and who you are. That's what you got to meditate on. Greater is he that is in me than in he that is in the world. If you don't meditate on the right thing, you'll make some bad decisions. Because some things really look bad, don't they? Hmm? Really look bad. I pray, I'm going to continue this next week. I hope I said something today that made your mind have to work. Because sometimes in church, our mind never is engaged. The only thing our mind is engaged in when we're in church is the, the roast or the turkey or whatever we left in the oven. And that's why we don't gain anything because we we're not open to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us in the now that will help you. So you don't have to live all stressed out all of the time. Why are you so stressed out? What are you, what are you, what are you thinking on? What are you rehearsing over and over in your mind? I'm going to say this one and I'm quitting. Sometimes we spend so much time worrying and fretting about our children instead of saying, God, you know what? I've done all I can do. And I'm going to put them in your hand. And if you can't do nothing with them, ain't nothing else I can do. I love them, but you see what this is. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes God knows what people have to go through for them to come to themselves. How many of y'all know that's right? Sometimes God know. Sometimes we have to go through some hard places to come to ourselves. But God knows how to get your attention. Because his intention is not to destroy or harm you, but to do you good. And so the Bible has much to say to us about our mental health. I'm going to come and show you some of those, some more of these things. In the scripture, they are, they're all through scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, what the word said and showed us how God helped his leaders deal with. David, all the stuff David, Father, thank you today. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that those that have tuned in are, are heard what the Spirit of God is saying to them. I remind you that God loves you. Worrying and fretting is not God's way. In fact, he said, do not do that. It only does cause you harm. Do not fret. Do not worry. Psalms 34, do not do that. It only causes you harm. God loves you. And he's ready to help you. 
but you got to align your life to his word and decide to live there. If you don't know Jesus today, if you just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my trespasses. Forgive me the things that I've not paid attention. Forgive me that I've not studied the word like I should so I will know how to conduct myself and conduct my affairs and my life. Come into my heart now. I give myself to you freely. Help me. I need your help. I'm telling you, he's not going to turn you away today. He loves you. And you're not going to ever do anything that makes you worthy. He's going to do it. Because of who he is and because he loves you. Well, we've got to go today. We've got to go today. I don't know in the auditorium if there's someone that feels like you need prayer. In fact, in just a moment, uh, we're going to uh, we're, we're be leaving the air in just a moment. I need all of you just come and stand here. I need to, uh, I need to uh, offer a prayer. And I'll tell you more about that when, uh, as soon as we're off the air. Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us again next week. We'll continue down this path. God loves you. We love you. Have a wonderful day and week. Join us again next Sunday. In fact, call somebody and tell them, tune in next Sunday at 11 o'clock. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our online worship service. We hope you were blessed by this time of worship and today's message. We invite you to continue your worship in giving. Giving online is simple. Please follow the instructions on the screen for our Give Now link or simply give via our Cash App link. You may also give by visiting our website at www.metrocathedraloftruth.com and click on the Donations tab. Again, thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray that you are encouraged, strengthened, and empowered. We hope you will join us again next Sunday. Until then, be blessed.